Okay, today we're going to get into Unit 8. And unit 8 has some stuff in it that's, that's kind of weird, but it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Yeah. Alright. Well, the first thing we're going to do is be born. We're going to recap real quick our sort of process for combinational circuit design, right? We're kind of building in classes, you know, modern digital system design, right? So we're kind of building this whole sort of workflow for designing digital circuits. So we're going to take a moment and kind of see where we're at in that process. So we'll call this section real quick, not quick, but review of combinational circuit design. Take the truth table, get that, you know, F is a function of A, B, C, D is equal to the sum of min terms, 0, 2, 3, 5, 14. Right? Step 3. And take that and use a K map. truth table to derive your generalized midterm or maximum expansion. You know, F is a sum of midterms, 0, 1, 2, 3, so on. Step 3, take those numbers, put them in a K-map, do your groups to find your minimum sum of products or product of sums, Boolean expressions. Remember that for sum of products, you group in the ones, for product of sums, you group in the zeros. Step 4, then take that expression and draw that minimum and or, or, or and, depending on what you're doing, logic circuit. Steps five and six we're going to list as optional, right? Because you could stop here, and you would have a relatively optimized working logic circuit that does what you need to do. So step five we'll call optional. And this is factor or multiply expression
dates. It's optional because sometimes you don't need to, right? Sometimes doing that won't get you a more optimized solution, but sometimes it can, which is why we got it up here as optional. Factor stuff out, multiply stuff out, get that multi-level circuit that may perform better. And I think last time we saw an example of that. Step six. We're gonna call it optional, but it's not really optional. You should you should really do it if and when you make it to the industry is convert your logic circuit so far. Set the true table to get your specification. Use that true table to get your mineral generalized expansion. You can use or plot the expansion in a K-map to get your minimum boolean expression. Draw it. Make that your first draft. And then if you can get better results, factor out to make that two-level circuit a multi-level circuit that might perform a little bit better. And six is convert that circuit to NAND gates or NOR gates, right? And NAND gates and NOR gates are cheaper to build or a lot faster. So we want to make our circuits as NAND gates if we can. So, like I said, that's what our universe looks like so far. Are there any questions about that? Yeah. So your circuit's like better, but it has less inputs, right? The, the core metric that we're using right now is fewer gate inputs, yeah. For us right now, as in fact, as we're going to see even today, it's not always the case, and there are ways that that can get messed up. But for right now, yes, the, our measure for what circuit is better than another circuit is if it does the job with fewer gate inputs. Yeah? Why are NAND and NOR gates better than uh, They require fewer transistors to build. Um, when you actually go to make them in silicon out of transistors, it requires actually, I think NAND gates only require like two transistors, but like NAND gates and NOR gates require like four or six, depending on what you're trying to do. So yeah, fewer transistors, which, is small, which, means you make small, which means you can make smaller logic gates, right? Which means you can cram more logic gates onto your silicon. They're gonna operate a lot faster than cheaper build. Yeah, so that's that's why. I don't know who teaches digital IC design. Kind of the Cuban squad. You know, Ari? Most of the classes are including these two jacked out anymore. Oh, that's a shame to class. Because the uh, VLSI, yeah. anything VSLI is not anymore. Yeah, okay. Well, that's sad. Yeah. Because that's a cool class. Um, surely, by the time you guys get around to it, we'll have found a faculty member to pick that up again. Um, let's see if he'll let me teach it. Uh, but yeah, there's a course called Advanced um, Digital Systems Design. It's like a 4,000 level, it's a senior level elective in the Electrical Computer Engineering Department. Basically, it's, it's this class, which you do everything at the transistor level. So you're actually designing nerve logic gates with transistors and doing a lot of the stuff that we just did, or that we're going to keep doing. But you're doing it like actually, you know, with transistors. You're gonna do the circuit simulations. You're gonna care about things like voltage and current and stuff like that, and actually design on silicon your digital systems. So cool. If you enjoy this class, I recommend picking that up again when we find somebody to teach the class. Dad's electronics does some of that. Not so much caring about silicon, but yeah. Designing. But advanced digital Watch systems, cool. Because you do like the actual like, you know, using the computer to like stick yeah. these guys and make your IC and simulate it and stuff like that. Uh, I think it's really cool. Okay. If using simulations to do that, is there a way that we're able to access that stuff now and just play with it to help get this class understanding better? Um, no. Well, yes, that stuff is available and you could do it. I would say that that will not help you understand this class better, if that makes sense. Because um, that's a whole different thing, right? You gotta know, you gotta know your electronics theory. You gotta take E1, you gotta take E2. You gotta know how transistors and diodes work. It's a circuits class, not a digital logic class. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so the thing you could play with if you wanted to, but I wouldn't like go to it thinking that it will help you understand this class. It would honestly probably just confuse it a little more. But if you want to play with it, come talk to me in office hours, man. We'll, we'll get it going. 
All right. Any questions about that? So today, chapter eight is really about some key places where this process uh, doesn't work. Or it's our edge cases. Um, let's see. Are we good here? Can I erase this? So yeah, now that we've said, like, here's our process for designing digital systems, let's talk about all the ways that process can fail. Or at least a few of the interesting ways that process can fail. the number of inputs to a logic game, right? Up till now, we've been building stuff with expressions that are like, you know, f is equal to a prime, b, c prime, or a, b, d, or a, b, c, d, right? Ooh, you got it here. Um, which means that these turn into gates with, they can turn into gates with lots of inputs, right? Um, quick pop quiz. Can we simplify this expression? What can we do? Get rid of the last term, right? What's that? Get rid of the last term. Yeah, we can use the last, lose the last one. Why? Absorption. Yeah, how do you know? Absorption. Good job. Look at that. You guys are doing stuff better than me. All right. So, yeah, so but if, if we didn't do that, right, we just had this circuit, right? This would be, you know, a two level and or circuit. It's got three inputs, three inputs, and four inputs. A, B, C, D, right? So Fannin refers to the number of, the maximum number of gates. Let's go ahead and define that. The maximum number of inputs to any single logic. So this circuit here, this logic gate has a fan or has three inputs. This circuit has three inputs. And this circuit has four inputs, which means that this circuit has a fan in. And the reason we care about that is because due to some limitations sort of outside of the scope of this class that are in that advanced digital system class that I was talking about, um, there are reasons why you might have to cap that off, right? Maybe the technology you're using only supports a certain number of inputs to your logic gates. And by technology, I mean like the nodes, like the size of the transistors or the types of transistors that you're using. Or maybe just the fab that is making your circuit, right? Can only make gates that have three inputs or two inputs or something like that. There might be a constraint on the fan in, which says that you just can't do it. You gotta have, um, you know, two inputs. You can't have a four input logic gate. We can't make it. We don't have the money. The machines won't do it. So you gotta improvise a little bit. Okay? Does that make sense? So let's do an example. Which is how we address that. Or rather, before we do that, how might we address that? Any guesses? Split the larger gates into multiple gates that are ORed or ANDed together, uh, respectively. Split the larger gates into the gates that are ORed or ANDed together, respectively. Um, 
like the four input OR gates, split that into two OR gates, and then OR that together? Yeah, but we don't want to necessarily add new lines. So you're saying, like, take this logic gate and change it into something that's like this, right? A, B, C, D, and then OR those guys together. Right? That's it. That's for what it's worth, that's a totally valid solution. That says, you know, we brought that down to two gates. That would work, that would meet the criteria. However, we introduced three logic, or introduced two new logic gates. We want to try to avoid that if we can. So what we're going to do is kind of just use our technique of factoring or multiplying, depending on what we're doing, to like try to just decrease it a little bit by a matter of degrees, instead of just going in and like hack and slashing our logic gates. So let's do an example. So I'm going to say this. Realize f is a function of a, b, c, and d is equal to the sum of min terms 0, 3, 4, 5, 8, 9, not 8, 9, 8, 9. 10, 14, 15. Using three input nor gates. This is a great example because it kind of ties in a lot of the other things that we've been working on. So you can imagine that in our process here, we've got to skip step one and we're starting from step two. So we've got some criteria, right? First is the limited pin, right? We're required to only have a maximum of three input NOR gates. We're allowed to have less than three input NOR gates. We have two input NOR gates. But we can't go greater than three. Also, we're going to make it out of NOR gates. Does the fact that we know we're going to make it out of NOR gates sort of affect what we're going to do right off the bat? Yeah, how's that going to change things? So product of sum. What's that? A product of sum. Exactly. That means we're going to start by building this as a product of sum circuits. So let's do it. First thing we're going to need is the four input K map. plot everything in. So we're given the sum of midterms expression, so it's going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, so let's see. We want to make our circuit in Norgus, which said that we want to make it a product of some circuit. So the first thing we want to do is, I guess, what is that? It's step three here in our process was, you know, get our minimum sum of products, a product of some blue and expression. And what's going to sort of make us uh, choose one or the other is like, what are we required to do, NAND gates or NOR gates? The spec said we're going to make it out of NAND gates, then we're going to do the sum of products expression, right? The spec says we're going to make it out of NOR gates, so we're going to do the product of sums expression. Good. So to get our product of sums expression, although, well, what are we going to do? What's the best way to go about that? These are like the max terms or something, the max terms. Exactly, right? And the max terms are represented by what up here? The zeros, absolutely. So we'll group the zeros as our max terms. The textbook does this example in a different way. It takes, um, it, I, I, did, I don't like the way the textbook did it. Um, because it did, it grouped the zeros as a sum of products. So we did F prime as a sum of products expression and then inverted it and then optimized it. It was really weird. And so I was like, I don't want to do it that way. So we're going to do it in a way that 
I think makes a little more sense. Although that is a valid way to get a product of sums expression, find f prime as a sum of products and then invert it to get f, which would be a product of sums, the whole thing. But it made the optimization weird, I don't like that. So let's just go ahead and group our terms here. So let's see, what do we, what do we got? <coughs> I'm going to do it over here because it's going to take up some space. Let's do, let's start with a big one, right? That term all by itself. No adjacent terms. So we're gonna have that f is equal to, what is that gonna get us? It's at zero, 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 one, so that's gonna be A or B or C or D prime, right? One one zero dash is going to get us a prime or b prime or c prime. Make sure you oh, 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 oh. Yeah, you're all right. Wait, wait, wait. You screwed it up, man. Slightly different. Oh, this one. So, zero, one, one, one dash. That's going to be A, B prime, C. Oh, my goodness. You didn't. The C. all my assigned solutions. Alright. And then that one, one zero, one one, is what? A prime or B or C prime or D. I'll take the whole board, right? D, not B, D branch. Oh, I'm just going to take a break. It's because I, I lost track of time this morning and I didn't get to, I didn't get to drink my coffee. That's what I'm blaming on at least. All right. So, there we go. Let's hear some. That'd be on top of it. Okay. So that's the seven. And we could now draw a, an or and two level circuit and convert it to or gates, or nor gates, excuse me, and life would be good, right? But what's the problem? Yeah, some of these guys have four input. Some of these are okay, right? These are three input, that's fine. But we have some four input logic gates. And that's going to be a problem. We've got to mess around with it. Yeah. So, how might we go about doing that? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to ignore these guys, right? They're good to go. They're three inputs. They're or gates. They're ready to. They're ready to do the thing. But we need to focus on these two. I'm going to bring them down next to each other. A or B or C or D prime. A prime or. B or C prime or D prime. And I'll say dot 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 for everything else. 
So what can we do to make this turn, right? So we have probably the sum, but what we want to do is sort of um, not multiply that, factor, factor this term. Wait, the other way, multiply. Use the distributed property. Shrink it down. So what can we do? What can we factor out or distribute it out of this expression? What's that? D prime. D prime, not just D prime. E or D prime. B or D prime, right? You want to look for, well, you want to look for like what's the stuff that's the same in here, right? So you got B or D prime, B or D prime. So I'll even take a step further here. I'll say we've got B or D prime or A or C, B or D prime or A prime or C prime. And of course, everything else. So now, yeah, we can factor these guys out. The B or D prime. And what's that going to get us? seem done, right? But it is. Now we can actually go ahead and sort of draw this guy out, right? So first off, nothing is more than three inputs. So we do that. We want to draw the whole tree diagram, but we would start here. With a level of OR gates. And they're going to get anded together. Then we're going to do one monster level of OR gates where everything happens. I guess we're going to do the whole tree deck. What is the criteria? for converting a multi-level circuit
Why not? Because we have this four on the bottom, yeah. Because that last NOR gate is going to be a four input. Uh -oh. So what are we doing? No. Quit, we resign in shame. Or keep working. All right, so. Let's see, power is ten. We're gonna need some more board space. All right. So let's see. I'm gonna draw our expression up here, right or whole expression up here again. We got B or D or A or C and. And A prime, B prime, C, A B prime, C prime, plus <laughs> there's two, A or C prime or D. Find a way to get rid of one of these. Yeah. At the beginning, why is it B or D and not B or D prime? For the same reason it's been all day, man. Because I'm um, doing it off the cuff instead of looking at my notes while I arrive here. I'm making mistakes. Same for you guys here. Keep me honest. I spent a lot of time writing this. You think I actually like look at them while I lecture? Good. You know? Yo, ah, you think I can just throw it up here? All right. So let's see. What can be done? Probably nothing to this first thing. We've already kind of done this one, right? Let's look elsewhere. First two terms? Yes. Um, well, I guess give it a shot to it. So, we factor that out. We'll get all this stuff. Uh, what? B prime or or what? A prime or C and A or C prime. That's yeah, pretty cool. Um, <coughs> and A or C prime D. Does that work for you? Cool, it's actually not with the. I thought I did it. Let's go with that. Does anyone see a different way to do it? You factor out A or C prime. Yeah, so the, the other way to do it was factor out A or C prime from both of these. Let's take a look though and see. That would give us what? A or C prime or B prime and D, right? Um, for speaks for itself, right? So both of these are valid moves. Both of them will actually meet our criteria of letting us build a circuit of free input NOR gates. Which one are we going to go with? The bottom one. The bottom one. Why? Because it's more. Because again, yeah, it's a smaller solution, right? It's a more optimized solution. This one still has a whole bunch of stuff going off of it. Or this one condenses down a little bit. Oh, not quite. I forgot about this. But even still, A prime or. C that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight 
Controls one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those ones are all. So yeah. So this one still kind of ends out. The other one. One difference for the winner. Yeah. A difference is like millions of dollars in production right there. So. And if you go to work for a company like Texas Instruments, you get that money, right? If you like refine and design and like shave off a million bucks, they give you like a you know ten percent like mirror bonus. Wait, ten percent of a million bucks is a lot of money. Hey, what? What's that? Hey, what did you say? So if you choose this career path, right? Become an ASIC designer for a big semiconductor company like Texas Instruments. Stuff like this, uh, these companies all do merit bonuses for finding these kinds of optimizations in designs. So if you did, like you said, well, our design ordinarily has this, but I was, you know, I was really looking at the Boolean expression, and then I found out really if we did it this way, we could shave off a couple gate inputs, and that translated into, you know, ten million dollars in increased revenue, or rather, decreased expenses in the fab that year. Uh, you get a cut of that money. Whoa. The only people that make more right out of undergrad uh, than ASIC designers, folks that do this stuff um, for the semiconductor companies, are like petroleum engineers during a boom. ASIC designers, I think, are like one of the only like straight out of undergrad jobs that you can do where you can make more than six figures right out of college. Because it's really hard. So, anyway. That's what I say. Best keep it hard. Yeah. It's not a fraction. Dude, there's a reason they pay a lot of money for it, right? It's saying a fraction of that. It's really difficult. Um, especially when you start talking about mirror log and all the other stuff. Anyway, so let's go ahead and we'll go with that. All right. The rest of our expression up here. Would be con or a or c. Building this circuit of and and or. And we'll start here. So we'll have two or eights. A C, A prime, and C prime. And then we're going to and them together. And in that same level of AND gates, I want to go ahead and do this guy. D prime D, because next up is going to be our big OR gate level. And let's see, the first OR gate is going to have the results of this. to NOR gates. Remember, all we do is convert all the gates to NOR gates and the odd inputs, or the inputs to odd number levels um, get inverted. 
So we start off by just adding those two NOR gates. That's level four, so they're going to remain the same. Then we have this AND gate. There's one on AND gate. The next level of NOR gates takes those. That second AND gate becomes NOR gate. That's in level three, which is an odd numbered level, which means that this is going to change to B and E prime. And then we have level two. Norgate, Norgate, Norgate. Which takes that. It's level two, so none of these input literals will change. So that'll still be B and E prime. That'll still be A and C prime. And then down here we'll have what? A prime, B prime, and C. And then that'll feed into that nor gate. Which has no input rule, so it's all good. And there we go. That's some legitimate combinational logic that happened right there. We're doing some real stuff now, folks. All right, any questions about, about that? That's a long one. Right. If there's nothing else, I apologize for taking this three minutes over time. Um, don't forget, exam one is due tonight. The assignment for unit five is due tonight. Um, we'll go through the stuff on Friday. Have a good rest of the day.